Today on the We Invested podcast, we have Robert Overweck, and he is the founder of the Adaptable Mindset Program. Robert, how are you doing today? Very good, Wesley. Thanks for having me. Yes, sir. Thank you so much for joining. And, uh, you know, before we get started, would you mind letting the people know where they can find you on social media, the internet, and your website? Yeah, sure. Yeah, we don't really use uh, social media, but our website is adaptablemindset.com, where people can find um, you know, all sorts of material to start learning, get inspired, and uh, all, all, all those kind of things. That's incredible. That's incredible. So, you know, let's just start from the top, man, and talk a little bit about, you know, where you're from and where you grew up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I'm from uh, Amsterdam, actually. I was born here, and I grew up in the vicinity as well. And uh, traveled around a bit in the Netherlands, lived for a while in the UK, in London, and uh, now I'm back already in Amsterdam for, I think, last time I looked, it was like 12 years already. And, That's incredible, uh, man. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, how would you say that growing up in Amsterdam uh, impacted your outlook on life and success? Mm, interesting. Yeah, I think, um, like, everywhere near, like, larger cities it's it can be a bit more rough and i think like how people act and react with each other and we always had like fighting on the on, on the schoolyard and those kind of things and i think that can be a good thing as well to sort of be exposed to that and develop a little bit of resilience and 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 flexibility to deal with those kind of things uh, so i think that yeah I, I do think that helped me and i think living in a larger city helps with um, different perspectives, multiple, um, yeah, di different kinds of inspiration. You know, there are so many uh, yeah, pe people from different upbringings, from art, from finance, uh, from, you know, from all over the place. And I think it's um, it's good to be exposed to uh, such different perspectives and such different views. And, you know, you mentioned that you traveled around Europe, the UK, Netherlands, London, and in different places. So how would you say that kind of benefited you to to see different parts of the world and different countries and different cities yeah actually i gave uh, lectures all over the world as well and i exhibited all over the world with my art as well and i think it's very beneficial for the mind body and soul to experience all of these things and get all of these impulses it's uh, yeah every time you notice that your worldview doesn't really uh it isn't really correct right and that's just a good thing to constantly experience so you'll be a better able to develop a more fluid view on the world and you're more conscious of the many, many different perspectives that there are on the world. I think that is um, yeah, also beneficial and good. So what is the Adaptable Mindset Program? So we founded the program because um, we've been working with, um, with corporates and SMEs as well with, uh, with innovation and also with quite a lot of startups. Uh, but more and more, we saw that a lot of people were like stuck in their ways, right? With a fixed mindset, no ability to move, uh, unhappy, similar thing we saw at universities. And I was like, wow, you know, why aren't people flourishing? Why aren't they stepping into their potential? Why are they afraid of change? That might be the most predominant thing that we saw. Um, and then we started to look at how can we change that environment? How can we change the mindset? And how can we make people more agile, open and flexible? And that's where we stepped in. I think we've been working on this for now for uh, yeah, over five years. We started together with the University of Applied Sciences in Amsterdam. We developed a program. We, we, uh, we piloted it with uh, over 2,000 people. And we started to get feedback, insights on what worked and what, uh, what didn't. And then keep on iterating. And now we work with yeah, Fortune 500 organizations from all over the world. And that's, yeah. Yeah, go no, ahead. That's, that's incredible. So, I mean, and it's, and it's a very, um, I would say, a very interesting industry to to be in. So, you know, how did you get started in, you know, in this field? Like, what what sparked your interest to to want to, um, you know, help people better themselves and grow and, and not stay stagnant to, you know, just where they are? Yeah. Yeah, well, um, in my work in innovation, um, actually, innovation is often almost always about people because people need to do the innovation and, and people need to go through the change. Uh, so I was asked more and more, hey Rob, can you help uh, person X or Y because he or she is not really uh, evolving or he or she is stuck in his way or he or she is close to a depression. And 
And so I was encountering so much unhappiness, so much unfulfilled potential that uh, yeah, I sort of got uh, a little bit pissed off. Like, this is not totally not necessary, right? As long as you, if you can develop the skills, then why don't we find out what the skills are and why don't we try to distribute those skills evenly? Like the other, um, like a few weeks ago, I had this session uh, with a bunch of people and like 90% of the group was dealing with imposter syndrome. And, and when, when you look at the global data, then um, you see that like around 42% of people in organizations have that as well. Um, but there are like thousands of things that you can do to counter that, like thousands of things that you can do to work on your mind, thousands of things that you can tell yourself to, to get through that. So why don't we all like explore what those things are and share them with each other you know that we as a collective um start to help each other start to help reflect and and, and move forward i mean i i think it's really interesting that you mentioned you know when you guys were first starting out and first creating or when you were first creating an adaptable mindset that you work with the college of applied science i believe you said so i mean yeah. you know it sounds like adopting this adaptable mindset is is kind of formulaic in a way like you mean like it's it's a science to it like there are steps to it is that is that the case is that true uh it is true and there's a different formula for everyone so it's not a dogmatic approach but there are a few themes or pillars that sort of work for everyone so there's a theme of being connected to the right inspiration, you know, instead of just constantly scrolling to your Instagram or Netflix and just consuming or the news, you know, just consuming negative things, consume beauty, consume poetry, consume hip hop, whatever, you know, whatever rows your boat and whatever you can learn from. Uh, another aspect is um, is movement, getting into action, it can be through yoga, kickboxing, whatever. All, like all of these things have proven to develop cognitive flexibility have proven to uh, for you to be better able to deal with ambiguity uncertainty um, and then also how you speak to yourself like do you give yourself the space to explore and do you speak to yourself in a positive way or do you speak to yourself in a negative way so it is about upholding like a mirror to yourself and and and, and yeah do like a check and balance like how am i doing and what could i possibly improve to get more of this adaptability and this resilience because often people know themselves, right? Uh, what they should be doing. It's more um, sense of um, getting that spark, finding that energy, and then creating like a, like, a, like a structure or a system that keeps on supporting you. Yeah, man, I mean, no, and I agree with that 1000%. Like I, I feel like the industry that you're in and the, the company that you founded and created is tackling some, um, very real and very like uh, necessary problems because you know like in today's time we have so much technology around like from like you said instagram all the social media television so we're we're always being stimulated like mentally but not so much physically anymore which is what i feel like is the biggest thing that probably kept our ancestors um positive you know, and moving forward, like you, like when you look back on history, you do, you do read about some people having, you know, bouts of depression here and there, but for the most part, you really don't yeah. see too much about it. And it could be just like lack of knowledge of it. But I also feel like, because they had to be so active, like, you know, wake up early in the morning and go farm or go do something like some mm -hmm. sort of physical activity, which now isn't, isn't really that necessary anymore. Like you yeah. can just go all day without moving but you've mm -hmm. still seen and consumed a lot of things. So I feel like it's important yeah. to like add that balance into your life, you know? 100%. I think like if you feel like shit and you go out and go for a walk for 30 minutes, you'll feel like a different person. Yeah. And also when you start walking, your uh, amygdala, your uh, instant, instant judgment gets turned down a little bit. You know? So you're more able to be open. You're more able to use your subconscious brain to, and then, and, you know, in your subconscious brain, there's stored all of the knowledge that you went through throughout your like entire life, which you can tap into. But if you're constantly on your phone, if you're constantly consuming content, you're just reacting and you're staying more in like a superficial realm. Mm -hmm. um, but if you are able to create more space also, 
And if you go for like 45 minutes or an hour of kickboxing, I can tell you, your mind will be clear. Like yeah. <laughs> you, you won't be thinking about work or stress or whatever. Yeah. No, man, you're clear and your body is stronger. And when your body is stronger, you also get a stronger mind. So all of these things are so simple, right? It's also, but we, we lost our way a little bit in that sense. You know, we're a bit too much distracted with our cat videos and with our... <laughs> Uh, comparing yeah. ourselves to Elon Musk and and those kind of things, right? And that is not, it's not really helping us. So you know, was this something that you ever had to kind of face and and um, overcome yourself? Like, is is this something where you were like, man, I went through a time like this, and I, you know, found something that worked for me as a way to help me overcome it. So now I want to go out and help others kind of do the same, or or like, how did you? like why is this important to you you know yeah yeah for me it's important because i just want everyone to just flow through life and i think like if everyone could step into their potential and their and in their energy then we will have so many less issues you know, so many people are doing like silly things at work that they don't want to do what if they all start to do more of the things that they want to do it will just be a more beautiful world but from my own experience what i experienced is so first i studied management economics and law then I went to the uh, to the art academy, and when I started to do my own thing there, um, people were saying, "Rob, what are you doing, man? This is silly. Doesn't make any sense what you're doing." And I kept having that in my career, where um, and with the thing that they talked about, which was silly. Like eight years later, I was exhibiting with that work all over the world, so I kept seeing that pattern of people not being open to new things and people denying. Uh, things to grow and if I have a challenge of of going past that or creating my own path imagine like other people and how many things do we then not give space or and and that um yeah again that, that I just didn't like that and um yeah I just had that a couple of times especially with innovation as well when I ventured more into that later on within organizations you always first hear, hear no that's not possible uh maybe next quarter we don't have any time there's no money like there's always an excuse to not do it and often it comes down to a fear you know a fear of stepping into the unknown um, or the inability to deal with the uncertainty and the ambiguity but like like, like we talked about before these are all things that you can train uh, does that answer your question wesley Absolutely. I mean, and you know, it's, it's like an interesting, it's a, it's an interesting field to be in, right? Because I mean, you're teaching people, you know, how to be more open-minded. You're teaching them how to innovate, how to be creative and how to like say yes to things. But you first have to teach them that to be that. So like, and that may have sounded confusing the way I said it, but like, you know, you're going to a person who may not be open-minded and trying to tell him, hey, my business is teaching people how to be open-minded. So it could mm -hmm. be like, oh man, we don't believe in that. Like, that's not a real thing. You know, like it's, it's, it's not real. So how do you like focus on marketing to people and gaining yeah. new clients and teaching them? Like, how do you just gain that, uh, gain yeah. new clients or, or market and spread the word about your company and what it is that you do? Well, I can tell you, Anyone on an executive level in an organization knows <laughs> that this is the case. That true, right? Right. True. And so, um, my entry is often a CTO, a head of innovation, head of product. And when we level and talk about the challenges, then it's often uh, either fear of failure, there's too little time to experiment, or um, it, it can be a dozen different things. And then we just um, see how we can empower people themselves to come up with solutions by creating the right space and in a playful way exploring what possibilities are. And I think like making it playful, making it experimental and experiential as well. I think that is a big key to all of this because like learning and development, it can just be one yeah, big, playful, joyful thing. It doesn't have to be uh, very harsh or difficult or you don't have to travel to your subconscious to see what kind of childhood trauma causes all of the things you know you can also just rewire your brain 
and and give it a more positive outlook it's that is also a path that you can take just by uh, taking the more playful approach so i mean you know when you're working with different clients and different companies and different people what is the most common um I don't know how to say it. Like, what's the most common blockage that you see? Like, what is the thing that's holding people back the most, like out of, from your experience? Yeah. Yeah. I think fear of failure, something that we see almost in, uh, in, in any organization, or they say that they um, have no mind space. That is a big one as well, that there's no brain space. There's no space to think. We just have meetings. We go from meeting to meeting. Yeah. Um, and that comes down to the point of, you know, using the Instagram and all those kind of things as well. I think like in the US, or oh, this was in the UK, um, 64% of the young people between 18 and 34 say that they feel that they can never relax. Right? Mm. And if you look at data in, in the US and people spend uh, time on their phone almost like five hours a day, it's like almost a full day's work. So <laughs> yeah, no yeah. wonder. And yeah, you need to find ways how to create more of that space so you can have your own thoughts as well and uh, find these interventions to um yeah to create that space for for creativity and also for yeah for new paths so how do you develop adaptability mm, yeah i well you can go at it uh, through multiple things it depends on what you naturally radiate towards so if it is for an example movement uh, well, you can start doing yoga, you can go rock climbing, you can go kickboxing, you can do like whatever also makes you be, feel a bit uneasy, right? A anything that that makes you feel that way. And if you do that in a more structural way, then after a while, you won't feel that anymore. And then you will have more mental flexibility and you will have experience. Wow, I can get through this failure, you know, uh, like after getting beat up in a sparring match, like holy cow but next time you're there as well you know next time you're there again and and going through that i think going through those kind of adversities that is one thing that gives you uh, adaptability also uh, meditation um meditation um if you do it often enough it sort of trains your your focus muscle so when something when change emerges your mind won't start running in all sorts of directions. Oh, this might happen. Oh, this negative thing might happen. You know, we're always forecasting negative things. But if you have less of that, you can just be more open and you'll be just better able to discern fact from fiction or discern emotion from possibilities. Uh, so those are a few other things that you can do. You can also start working in different ways. So there are Imagine that you want to start a, a new business or you want to um, uh, create an app. Um, you know, it could cost you like hell a lot of money. But there are, with new types of tools, new types of working, you can, you can prototype and create things for like a fraction of the cost in just a fraction of the time. And those kind of ways of working also take away uh, the uncertainty and the risk. So instead of failing with a project of 100K, you fail with a project of 2K. You know, so there are so many different things that you can do to change the yeah the, the, the paradigm or change the yeah create more adaptability and um, and resilience and then i think also not so many people have the ability to imagine things anymore and because we're always busy because our mind is always consuming things but also because we don't train our imagination that much anymore you know, we're constantly exposed to negative things. The world is on fire, COVID here, war over there, recession, blah, blah, blah. Okay, man. So your mind is full with negativity. And that is also what you then project out into the world. So it becomes almost this two-way street, this almost this echo chamber of negativity. So it would be good to also put in like beautiful music, beautiful art, beautiful poetry. And you no, know, you need to nurture your soul. You need to fill the well you need to take care of that inspiration that in a structural way because if you do that you'll you'll just expand your frame of mind and you'll create a larger lattice work of just possibilities man put possibilities in your brain and next time you, you you meet like a challenge you might pick out a possibility instead of like a negative route so i mean you know you mentioned that and correct me if i'm wrong but you mentioned that you started out and 
economics and and kind of working in, in more of that field. And then you made a transition over to art and, you know, dealing with, with the artistic side of life. Um, did it, was that an easy transition for you? Did it, did you have to be, did you have to learn to be open-minded or is art, you know, something that you've always been interested in and something that you always appreciated? Um, like as a kid, I was already doing many different things, already doing a little bit of painting, doing a little bit of photography. Um, I was big into gaming as well. So a lot of different different things, always very curious. And I think my parents just gave me that space, which I'm very grateful for. Uh, but if you haven't had that space back then, then you still can now get that space, right? You can create a space for yourself. Um but that step from management, economics, and law, you know, I remember I was in the second year and my teacher said, hey, Rob, can you also grab your books? And we were, I, I think, second year, third month. And uh, I didn't even buy my books yet. So it was, <laughs> it was a good signal that it was not in the right place. I was just always drawing and not paying attention. So um, I decided to drop out um and follow more of my own path and i noticed that the more and more i follow my own path with my art exhibits all over the world also with the mindset thing that we're talking about now in the beginning a lot of people said oh do people really want this are companies open for it i'm like dude i don't care we're just going to try it we're going to explore and you know now the same people knock on your door again it's so like hey can we work together so but it, it's a difficult thing you know when um yeah it's good to have like faith in your own stuff but sometimes you can also believe in the wrong things so you also need to be um very, very conscious of what what you're doing how the world is reacting and also what the world wants um yeah it's almost that cliche again you know that like really lay a listening air to ear to uh what you can contribute to the world and um that will make your life more easy yeah, man, and it, it just seems like you you uh, have a really good grasp of like just understanding the balance of like life, you know, like the art side of it from to the business side to even like, um you know, chasing your dream to realizing how the world and the clients are reacting to what it is that you're doing and what business you're creating. So I feel like it's a it's a balance in that there. But, um you know, I want to ask like, how did you gain your business acumen and your business IQ to understand that, um, you know, like this is something I can go out here and market and sell just like, um, working with these companies, these CMOs, these CIOs, like how did you learn about business, you know, to know what business model that you want to use or how do I charge a client or how do I go out here and, um, do, how do I go out here and complete business development? Like, how did you learn about that? Yeah, good question, Wesley. So I, uh, prior to this, I've been running around in um, in corporate innovation with the likes of eBay, Liberty Global, so uh, a large organization. So I learned um, how to play that game, how to uh, get through the different layers in organizations until you get to the top. And I learned to speak that language. I learned to... Um, deliver on time or even earlier right you, you need to have a certain professional attitude uh, but if you also have a critical mind and an open mind and flexible then you also see like wow we can improve so much here um, so if you add that to the list of the things that they are used to you already because start to become like a player that they really want to work with because you have um, I, I think that is that is important and what else? Um, I, I think the, the, the listening aspect and really putting myself in their shoes, or like really understanding their situation and also thinking a little bit for them so they can say that um, something isn't working because of reason X, but it could be that it's a reason slightly adjacent to it, that they're talking about a symptom, but we should go to the root cause. And... Um, and I think what also helped me is that we do a lot of stuff collaboratively and people like to work more in that way. At least that's 
what we experienced, especially on the on the higher level. Um, most of those people don't want to be told uh, what to do. Actually, a lot of people don't want to be told what to do. Uh, but if you um, yeah, collaborate more with people in uh, in that way and say like, hey, these are all of the optionalities, all the things that we that we can do. What do you want to do, and how can we together um, make change happen, or how how can we together let people thrive? I think that is an important thing. But also for all of the employees and include people in in processes, and that will often make things um, yeah prosper. So you know, like in in America in in Europe and there's like I feel like there's a a, a a difference in culture like and I've never been over to Europe but I'm talking about just like what I observed on TV and you read in books or whatever the case may be like I feel like America put has a really big push on like hustle culture you know work mm -hmm. 80 hour weeks or whatever yeah. but it seems like you know in Europe they've always appreciated arts more um poetry philosophers and things of that nature so mm -hmm. i mean do you feel like that plays a, a role um in the creation yeah. of your company and, and kind of what it is that you that you've created um interesting question um so I think like America is, um, I think it can be divided in multiple different segments. I think what you're saying is mostly true, but if you look at uh, technology and top leadership, for an example, Sundar Pichai, CEO of, um, of Google, he takes a lot of time for himself for mental space. You know, he starts his day with a tea ritual, with a paper newspaper, no meetings, um, we know that Steve Jobs went for a lot of walks and actually at uh, Apple, they have their own university where they teach about art. You know, they look at the edges of, of Picasso and in, in, in an entire series of edges of Picasso, you see that he he's searching for the most simple, uh, most primary form of, of a bull. And that's what they teach to their people like, hey, simplicity is important for us. This is an example of where you see simplicity. So I think in the upper echelons, there's definitely space for it. But actually today I was talking to my girlfriend about like how crazy it is, how few vacation days that you guys have, you know, mm -hmm. how how hard they let you work. It's like, it's a little bit insane. Um, it's, yeah, I'm not really sure if that's, um, yeah, I'm not really sure if that's healthy, but you see, like in, uh, in Europe, you have quite a few uh, companies now that have four day work weeks, which is, and 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 you see that the product productivity rises. Uh, we see also see other uh, developments. By the way, we see more skills based work even at large organizations like Unilever, PepsiCo, HSBC, where people have multiple jobs. So you can work for three days at a large corp, make some money, but also maybe take care of your parents and work at another legal firm. So we see that even the large organizations are are evolving and start to notice that people learn more by doing different kinds of things and that they are happier and interestingly enough wow they got from research that happy like high um, employee experience leads to high customer experience and we see that companies who have both so happy employees and a good customer experience that they have double the revenue of or organizations who don't of course this again is very logical so i'm not really sure why not everyone is optimizing for this um, but to your point of the question that, that you ask, yeah, I think there there is a difference, but I think what you in the US have is um, the will to to improve. And when you fail, it's okay. You just start over. And that is something that we can learn from you. So maybe you can learn from us a little bit of the leisure and of creating space. And maybe we can learn from you. Um you know how just to how just to pick yourself up and keep on going. Yeah, man. I was no. I think that's a great point, man. I was watching a TikTok like this was like two days ago, right? And there was a guy who had moved. I think it was to like Barcelona or somewhere cool, and it, it was like mountains and cool views or whatever. And he was like, "Yeah, man, over here in Barcelona or wherever, Bolivia, wherever it was, 
He was like, man, we work three hours a day. Then he went to a coffee shop and he went and got some food. Then he had wine with his friends, did yoga and all this kind of cool stuff. I'm like, man, that's crazy. Cause you know, three hours a day, that's incredible. So yeah, mm. they doing something right over there, you know? <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. Well, that is a, yeah, it's a, I think it's also about the, the type of output that you can uh, deliver. If you, if you can deliver the same output or even more, um, yeah, why not? Exactly, man. So, you know, how are NFTs and DAOs the future of adaptable organizations? Well, like what I told before, like about uh, Unilever, HSBC, PepsiCo, how these large organizations are transforming more towards skills-based work. So you no longer have like a fixed position, um, but you've got more like gigs and, and smaller tasks and like entire teams materialize overnight to tackle these projects. We see the same in these DAOs, in these decentralized autonomous organizations in the Web3 space, where like anyone can pick up any task that they want, even people from outside the organization. And it's all based on whatever you want to do. And it's all based on purpose. So there's this one group who recently bought a, a basketball club. So they raised like 4 million through NFTs. And now uh, everyone can, everyone who contributed to that funding um, gets a revenue share in the apparel that they're going to share. I'm like, holy wow. Imagine that you can be part of such a company and that you can con contribute to such an organization. You know, I don't see how that not, how, how can that not be the future, right? Where we all, where we all gain from the growth and we, where we can all contribute ideas and, and where that is valued. And of course it's now still chaotic and uh, scams happen and those kind of things, but that always happens with new things. But um, yeah, I would definitely keep an open mind to these kind of things. But even organizations like Budweiser, you know, they are launching a new beverage where you as a consumer can decide on the branding, on the marketing, on, you know, people are building stuff together. And, and people are also saving something like the rainforest, you know, I think I think fantastic things are happening. I mean, and, and how do you as an artist, like, you know, you, you mentioned that you like the painting, that you went to school and you studied this and just coming over from Europe where that's a huge culture, that's a huge focus. How do you feel? Like, how does that make you feel about NFTs and the future of it? Like, is it, it seems like it's something that you're interested in and, and kind of want to see more of. Yeah, definitely. Like the, um, the type of creativity that, that we've seen in that space for the last, uh, not not right now because the entire market imploded, but right before, there was so much creativity and people were all just working together. And you know, I would take some of your work, appropriate it, build on top of it, and you would take some of mine. And it's just a collective of craziness. And I haven't seen that kind of creativity and innovation for um, for quite a while, actually. So yeah, for me and for a lot of people, it's actually quite inspiring. Yeah, man, I agree with that 1000%. And it was like, uh, I just had a personal experience with NFTs. I've been an investor for a while, probably invested for like the last two years, just buying NFTs mm -hmm. or whatever. But when they when they first, so when I first started my podcast, like I had these, I was just making these comic strips because I had an idea to make a, a comic book, like a financial literacy comic book. But then cool. like two months later, NFTs came and then so I'm like, okay, well, I could turn these comic strips into like an NFT and kind of do something cool with that. So I feel like it gives uh, all businesses like a, a alternative way to show and express their creativity and to like connect with yeah. different audiences yeah. through different ways because people may not want to listen to a whole podcast or go read a finance book or read a blog or whatever. They might just want to look at a picture and then get the message, you know, like through yeah. a creative way. Yeah, 100%. That, that's also why these memes are so popular, right? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, they they are able to uh, get out of all of the noise and it's sort of simple and it's often funny. And yeah, so I've, I've seen these, um, these NFTs made out of uh, comics and you could own certain layers of the comic. So you 
by your purchasing power, you could decide the story of how the comic evolves. Like these oh, kind of things, man. That's weird, right? It's that's crazy. Dope, and yeah. I've seen artworks as well where you can uh, own layer one, I own la layer five, and even with music, they have that. So I can own the bass and you can own that and own the vocals. Like, guys, that's amazing, right? That's yeah. Imagine that art is constantly evolving or that music is constantly like. Remember that Kanye West put out um, his album on Spotify and that he kept updating it. What if that's crazy as well? Right. But we need more of that crazy that we are not stuck in our ways, that we're not compartmentalized and not say, talk about things like, no, art is like this or finance is like this. Please not. Please, like, like let's just experiment and keep that openness. I agree with that 100%, man. So, I mean, you know, have, have is entrepreneurship something that you've always been interested in or is this kind of like a skill that developed over time uh well to be honest both my parents are entrepreneurs so that um like in in my upbringing i um i got that but at the art academy they don't really teach you that they don't teach you any <laughs> any of those skills actually it's just an ivory tower that you're in and you're in your own hyper reality and then, then you end up in the real world. So, yeah, you, you need to learn a lot on your own, uh, which which was, I have to be honest, which was very difficult to, yeah, yeah to learn how to deal with clients. And, and yeah, it took a few years, it took a few years. Uh, and what helped for me is first work at, um, yeah, at a medium-sized IT company to learn a bit. Um, about uh, you know all the tricks and how things work, and then start to do more and more for um, for yourself. So, how was your creativity, you know, help to benefit the your business and, and your company? Like, how 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 much creativity goes into, like, how much of your creative side goes into the analytical business entrepreneurship side? Mm, let me see. So. Um, you know, about entrepreneurship, you can uh, read a lot, right? Uh, you can infinitely read about how you can set up your business and what your next steps should be. And I did that. There was a time where, where I did it. But I noticed the things where I just did my own creative thing, that those things had the most impact. Sure, I, I first had the input, but then I decided to take my uh, yeah my own interpretation, my own path. And that, that gives like a new, fresh, fresh route. A fresh perspective and it makes you also unique you know it gives you the ability to be unique in a market and so your pricing and your positioning you can't compare it because no one else is doing it so recently like a month ago we did a festival for an organization a festival for an entire week for of um, mind expansion creativity and reinventing how we work like Two months before, I never imagined that we would ever do something like that. But it's about being open and then, yeah, just using our collaborative creativity to build these kind of things. And people love it. It's fun. It's playful, and uh, it's very cool to do as well. That is very interesting, man. And uh, you know, I watch a lot of. Let me know. Let me know if I'm going too far left field right now. But I watch a lot of Joe Rogan, and he talks about you know psychedelics. They help expand the mind and open the mind. Is that something that it does that come into play in in any of with any of your festivals or um, meetings? I or wish, anything? man. <laughs> I wish. I think for the festivals, it's um, it's too far away for most people still. It's um, for most people, it's too unknown. Now. Um, like these are like real, yeah, <laughs> real corporates. Most people wear like a white blouse or a blue blouse, mm -hmm. so it's not uh, it's not such a um, broad range. But really, psychedelics can really help in um, dealing with your PTSD, opening the mind. It creates new neural pathways. It's proven, um, and more and more fantastic things are are being developed. So yeah, I'm a, a very big believer in that. But it needs to fit with needs to be the right time it needs to fit with the psychological profile it needs to be in a safe space for people and um often these organizations you know you, you do have these forward-looking organizations but most often they do more like breath work 
where you can have this similar psychedelic experience, but just through breath and storing a lot of oxygen in your um, in your body and then like not breathing for like two to three minutes. Mm -hmm. And then you also space out, um, which is interesting on its own. And so I think any experience where you have sort of um, out of body, out of mind experience where you deconstruct and are able to synthesize again and 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 integrate it again is a good experience that's also by the way something that um you've got robert keegan he was the chair of adult development at harvard and he said um by sometimes periodically uh losing our mind we stand a better chance of finding ourselves and right and if you do that in a yeah slightly controlled way through these substance substances it can be um yeah, you just can't be in your your just rational cognitive mind anymore. It's just not possible. So that's a good thing. How do you define success as an entrepreneur? Oh, interesting question. Um, so that we have a beautiful impact on the people that we work with, that they are able to flourish and flow through life, um, that the company gets to their goals but then in a yeah maybe more humane way um and that that i can live a happy life as well and the people that we work with you know that like the thing that you mentioned of the guy in barcelona you know uh we're working a few hours be, being outside in the sun uh coming up with um with new directions to explore um yeah so, something like that it's it's pretty close to what it is now. I think we are uh, on a, on a beautiful flow currently. How would you like for people to remember you and your company? Um, yeah, so I'm not such a big fan of legacy or those kind of things. We're just very much here in the now. Um, I remember, it would be cool if uh, people learn things that they are able to pass on to other people to help them as well. That becomes like a ripple effect. So that hey, something started here, uh, and we don't even need to have need to take the credit or whatever. It's just about creating that ripple of um, of change and and empowering people. What does the future of the adaptable mindset program look like to you? Um. So we'll be we'll be doing more festivals um, because that's fun. We're going to work more with uh, with scale ups, and um, I think in maybe three years we will also have um, an educational um, supplement for uh, regular education for the curriculum uh, to to empower kids as well with with the right mindset with how to follow their intrinsic motivation, how to deal with stress, how to learn from what, what attracts their curiosity. Um, because if you start at the foundation, if you start at kids, then you don't have to solve all of these challenges later on. So yeah. it's it's easier work. So it's all about easy work. S similar thing with the festivals. You know, it just makes yeah your life more playful and everyone's life more easy. So um, these are interesting routes. Um, and we are helping a few other uh, organizations as well. So we are helping um, uh, a tribe in the rainforest to become uh, self-reliant. And we are helping farmers with regenerative agriculture because, you know, we, we have such a large network. Uh, we know how to build things. So why not do it for, uh, for some good and some cool things as well? So, I mean, how did you focus on growing your network and building these relationships what what steps did you take to connect with these different organizations and, and tribes and different farmers what steps did you take yeah, yeah, yeah. um so working in the innovation for for 10 years helped so and then I, I was already in contact with like the heads of innovation and these people moved to different organizations so you get in touch with more and more organizations that helps um, sometimes being at a network event, um, sometimes even being on a podcast. Um, so recently I had a lady from, uh, from Lyft reach out. Hey, interesting what you were talking about. Maybe we can have a chat. Oh yeah, sure. Um, and then staying in contact, learning what is relevant for those people. And then, um, 
yeah, building on the network because it's all about trust. It's all about trust and doing fun things together. So if you can, of course, you need to really resonate with people. I, th I find that important. So if we don't vibe together, that's fine. You know, you don't have to work with everyone. Uh, but so, but as, and as, I think it's also about, um, so if I express what I find important and if, and if um, people like that, then we are able to fuse connections. So it's also about being maybe a little bit um, open, maybe, maybe I'm not sure if fragile is the right word, but something like that, that you yeah, show a bit of your like true color. So uh, recently I had a talk with a lady who did transformations within organizations. And first we had, you know, the basic conversation, 20, 30 minutes about what we saw happening in the organization. And then I dropped in, you know, it's just all about energy, right? And she was like, yeah, it's all about energy. And then, and then we had an or, a conversation um, where we really connected. So I think, yeah, that is also important. Man, Robert, thank you so much for your time today, man. And I, I really enjoyed, you know, getting the chance to pick your brain and, and learn more about how you think and even getting the chance to learn a little bit, a little bit more about the European culture, man. And you have a, a very like calm and relaxing energy about yourself, man. So it's super cool getting a chance to talk to you and getting to know you a little bit better. So thank you. Thanks, Wesley. It was, uh, it was great having a conversation. And I'll share with you some uh, some more uh, of these uh, NFT links to, uh, to explore. Yes, sir. <laughs> cool.